Moon Stellar. Welcome to my channel. I'm glad that you're here. So in this reading, we are going to be looking at whether or not the person on your mind feels a connection with you. Are they feeling a connection with you? Are they feeling... How, why, what are they feeling exactly? Like, uh, are they, they're feeling, if they're feeling a connection, what kind of connection? Are they willing to pursue it? We're going to kind of look at a little bit of all of that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what we've got today. <laughs> so, we, we have four groups, as you can see, uh, as usual. And on group number one here, we have the Celestite Opal. On group number two, we have Dendritic Opal. On group number three, we have Galena. And on group number four, we have Serpentine. So the timestamps will be down below. I, of course, I encourage you, please tune in with your intuition when you're doing this as much as possible. Everyone kind of think works differently. For me, my first, whatever draws my eye first, or it's like a gut instinct for me, that's a lot of times how my intuition works anyways. It's, it's kind of like the first thought is the best thought. <laughs> it's just kind of, I don't know if it's a fire in me or what, but <laughs> that's kind of how it goes for me. But for some people might need more time to concentrate. Just pause if you need it. But yeah, the timestamps will be down below and I will see you all in your reading. Thank you for being here. Hey guys, so if you chose group number one here with this uh, opal and celestite stone, this is your reading. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is a person on your mind. Do they feel the connection like you do? Let's find out. And like I said, this can be used for any kind of connection for sure. So we have, think about it. <laughs> we have friendship. We have the Seven of Wands and the Three of Cups. So this is strong friendship vibes uh, right away. Just going to say it. And we have the Chariot there as well. So first of all, I have some different meanings for some of the cards. So I'm going to kind of keep that in mind as I'm interpreting. There's a reason why I might say some of the things I say. It's because I have a specific layout going on here. <laughs> okay. So I'm just pointing that out real quick. So I feel like for a lot of you, this might be a friendship. Okay. And it's not just because of this card, um, the friendship card. I understand that a friend is in my life for a reason. So first of all, this person does feel a connection to you. They believe that you have come in their life for a specific reason. Even if they don't give that a definition, uh, you know, it's like, oh, they're my soulmate or oh they're my soul tribe or you know it may not even be that they use like a terminology for this it might be that they just are like this person like you know if they you ask them seriously like say you guys are kind of tipsy and having a conversation and you open up and you'd be like yeah man you're in my life for a reason <laughs> uh, yeah I bless the day I found you I don't know why oh wow okay that song came through very strongly let it be me <gasps> interesting by the Everly Brothers I bless the day I found you. I want to stay around you. So now I ask you, let it be me. Hmm, interesting. So that song might resonate for some of you. Whew, okay, cool. I'm channeling songs. So we have friendship here, though. So I feel like for a lot of you, this is a, a big-time friendship thing. I think that's probably the basis of your relationship, and they do have very friendly feelings towards you in general. But I think this card just answers part of the, part of the, quest, part, part, part of the question they understand that you're in their life for a reason. So already, do they feel a connection? Yeah. They feel some sort of spiritual purpose to, to your friendship or to your connection in some way. Now, the Three of Cups as well can denote friendship for me. That, to me, and I think every reader has, you know, their own terminology built up with the cards as well. Um, wow, flicker. I don't know what happened there. Uh, sometimes my light's weird. Anyway, uh, so you know, sometimes we, we all have our different kind of ways you know we get experience reading cards for other people and stuff like that too so we kind of build up our own kind of definitions as well so, so for some people this might not be the case but for me three of, friend, uh, three of cups is a friendship card <laughs> it, it denotes happy feelings friendly feelings and uh usually just a very like warm fun loving card and uh kind of very supportive energy so it might be that you are, you even know this person through a group of like a support not like a support group, but like a group of friends is an example. But even if not, it just really talks about that there's a this friendly feeling between the two of you. And uh, they do feel that supportive nature. Um, you know what I mean? And But with the Seven of Wands, I have to say, this person is a little bit hesitant in some way. And this might... It's the first card out, which it's kind of a... Oof, 
one for this type of question because it, it really is kind of a flight or flight, fight or flight card. And, you know, it can be someone who kind of is self-defensive. And so why might a person be like that? Well, maybe they've been hurt in the past. Maybe they've been scared. Maybe they've, you know, with a think about it, especially right there, this might be somebody who's overthinking things, is a little bit too afraid. Um, they might still not have come to a decision on how to act or what they want to do with it. Like they feel the connection, but they don't really, they haven't really sorted out what they feel, you know, on a deeper level necessarily. So this might be somebody who kind of, uh, handles their feelings in a a specific way maybe where they try not to develop anything too crazy um I feel like though for a lot of you this is like very much a friendship I have to say and uh <clears throat> with chemistry it says there's a strong mag magnetic attraction even even so I feel like for a lot of you there is a chemistry there for some of you, though, I'm going to admit, and this is just me being bluntly honest, if I were telling you different, I'd be lying to you. But this is, you could be friend zoned by this person. I'm not, I, I know some of you might be real mad about hearing that. Um, and make sure you pick the right pile because if, if you're not in a friend zone and you know it, then this is not your group. Like, go back to the beginning and, like, maybe, I don't know, do a cleanse or something like that or try to clean your mind again or something like that and, and try to re repick. Because this is, I feel like, I have to say this for like, you know, 90, you know, something percent of you, this has to be a friend, a friendship thing. And I really feel like what we're getting here is somebody who just feels very friendly towards you, but is probably not insistent on pursuing anything further. Now, for some of you, there might be reasons as to why that is. Okay. Um, if you have noticed like a, a striking chemistry with this person, they're probably fighting it. Okay. So if you've noticed that they've flirtatious with you, that they've come on to you as well, they might be kind of trying to fight these feelings and there might be a specific reason for it. I can't go into why that reason would be for everyone because holy smokes, you know, who knows how many people are watching this and it would be irresponsible of me to sit there and try to make a story for you. Um, when everyone kind of has a different thing going on in their life and a different relationship. So, um, you know, but uh, does this person feel a connection? Yes. Are they hesitant to kind of take it a little bit further or to define it further? I think yes at, at this point a little bit. Um, they might be a little bit hesitant maybe to go further than friendship at this time for some reason. But they do feel a connection. Now what do they want? The chariot. And what's interesting is look at the cans. Risk, gain, choice. And it's like they're holding these possibilities. So what's interesting is that these are cans and those are pres pre preservation. It's like a, a preserving system, right? These cans. So it might be that they want to kind of be protective of themselves, preserve themselves and wait to see what happens. So if this is a new connection, if this is a new connection, that bodes well for some of you because it feels like they want to explore it still and they want to see. But I feel like right now they feel that connection, but it's just very much still in the friendly stages. And I think they're willing to explore it. Because a chariot, for me, that's coming in the place of where I asked, well, what do they want? What, like, what's their plan? What are they going to do about this? Uh, you know what I mean? Like, what's, what's going to happen here? And we have the chariot. So it does seem like somebody who's willing to explore. And for some of you, if you're at a distance, they might be wanting to travel and see you. For some of you, um, literally, because the chariot could be that. Um, but again, it's just like kind of this forward movement. Like, take a risk, you know, find out who this person, you know. I think that ultimately they will open up to you is what I'm getting. Uh they will ultimately open up to you and explore where this could go. But I do think that there's just this, I mean, cautionary energy right here, it, especially I think with friendship here, it's like a, I'm not going to move beyond that at this time because I, I just need to explore it further. And again, like I said, there are going to be reasons as to why this person's doing that. Maybe they're, you know, hesitant for some reason or other that makes sense in your situation. Like you work together or, you know, somebody maybe hasn't fully disengaged from a relationship or I don't know, you know what I mean? But, uh, that is what I'm seeing. So do they feel the connection? Absolutely. They do they do and there is a certain chemistry between the two of you I think that you probably have some significant synastry going on uh, I really do and I do feel like there is a sense of this person feeling fated to have met you or like you're there in, a, in their life for a purpose but like I said they may not give it a definition and also like I just said I feel like exploring it further beyond friendship at this point is kind of not in their 
itinerary necessarily. Not that they're against the idea with the chariot, but uh, maybe that's something that kind of needs to develop further down the road when things are more available or they're kind of putting down their um, defenses. <laughs> but anyways, that is what I'm seeing for those of you that chose group number one. I am hoping that this reading gave you some insight and some knowledge, <laughs> and I hope that it helped. And if it did, let me know in the comments below. Either way, I love hearing from you guys down below, even if you chose group number one, or even if you just tell me hello. I always appreciate your comments. So take care, guys, and I'll see you all in the next reading. Hello, my friends. So if you chose group number two here at this dendritic opal, this is your reading. So let's go ahead and see what the cards say about your connection. Do they feel the connection? What do they feel? What's kind of the plan? Like I said to group number one, I have like kind of a system here set up with these cards. So I may interpret them certain ways. And that's just because I have kind of certain questions asked by each card. So I'm just going to kind of do it that way. Um, okay, so... Does this person feel a connection? Well, yeah, they do. They do. And it's not even the soulmate card. I think it's the fact that there's a king and queen of wands here. So we have a pair showing up, right? So, <laughs> I mean, this obviously implies that there's a sense of like, a, I guess, a solidarity. And I do feel like this person somehow feels like you guys are a good match. Now, the Three of Swords here in the middle feels like there's some sort of blockage here. We have fear and clear the air as well. So it, it, hmm. it feels like this is somebody who's perhaps a little bit hesitant at this time for some reason or the other. Uh, well, not some reason or the other. Actually, I actually think it's probably because they are a little bit fearful. Maybe they don't fully understand the situation between you. There might need to be some things that need to be cleared out first as well in order to kind of pursue the connection as an example. Um, I do feel as if this person wants to make something happen here though because this card specifically is talking about what they kind of want, what they'll do. And kind of what they plan on doing about this connection, sort of like an intentions card. And we have that King of Wands. It's almost like to be that person for you or to be a match for you. But there is some sense of trepidation here because we have fear. I realize that I'm testing my resolve to live in the energy of love. Maybe this person has a hard time opening up for some reason with the Three of Swords here. Maybe there's previous pain or maybe you're in a sticky situation where they have more high likely chance of getting hurt. Like, uh... Some people, like, okay, as an example, say you recently, and this might be for a few of you, uh, say you recently broke up with someone and you met someone new, and that person could be like, am I a rebound? Am I just going to get hurt? What if they go back to their ex? You know what I mean? For some of you, that might be what's scaring them, literally, because I feel like that was kind of a channeled message, so maybe some of you need to hear it, not all of you, but... Um, you know what I mean? But so I feel like that there is some sort of trepidation, but this person, I think they would like to clear things up with you in some way. Uh, that's one of their desires is kind of get over the fear, clear the air, understand where things are. Because I do feel like they do feel a connection to you. Absolutely. But there is some sense of blockage here. And then we have soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. So, I mean, when you're asking a question, do they feel a connection? And you get the soulmate card coming out. Well, I mean hot diggity dog how can you not <laughs> assume that that's like literally a yes because there are other cards that can come out in that deck that kind of imply no right their retreat card or <laughs> there could be like a you know there's a unrequited love card as well <laughs> so they do feel a connection let me ask a little bit here why can you elaborate a little bit more on the three of swords for group number two they feel the connection but why is the three of swords here I feel like it's representing some kind of blockage. This might be about needing to be some sort, sort of honest about something that's painful or that's blocking it. Because the Three of Swords really can be about a blockage as well. Um, it's, it can be about heartbreak and divorce even. It can talk about loss, depression. It can talk about surgery. Um, <laughs> you know, fixing something as an example. But uh, there needs to be, a, like, it's like they want to express something. And they're scared to express it, perhaps, of getting hurt. So there might be a fear of rejection on this person's part. What are they afraid of when it comes to this connection? What, let me put this back and we'll see if it comes out again, just in case. So what do they fear when it comes to this connection? 
being hurt. Ten of Swords. They do. They fear. They fear being hurt. I have a. I swear to God, I have a spirit around me right now because my head, the light was flickering in group number one, and my hair keeps getting touched. <laughs> I swear somebody's touching my forehead okay sorry some of you like get the piles where I'm having this problem <laughs> something bad it's just like I definitely feel something around me okay um <clears throat> I wonder where the moon's at okay never mind anyways ten of swords they're afraid of getting hurt like they're afraid of getting destroyed of having a bad ending a sad ending uh, that sort of thing. They might also be f fearful to make an ending in their own life for some of you. Now, I once had a reading with someone who was asking about somebody who was in a very like toxic, unhappy relationship. It was somebody they were, you know, interested in. And it's almost like that person was showing up as unable to do anything because they were kind of waiting for like like something to happen, like, you know, something terrible to happen in order to have an excuse to leave. And I don't know, maybe that person's looking for that. I don't know why I'm getting these messages. So these are so specific. Um, sorry about that for, for her. And they're not going to be for everyone, but essentially I, I do feel like this sums, summarizes up is like this person's afraid of being hurt. Um, group number two, I'm going to ask, what should I ask? <laughs> what should I ask? What should I ask? We have the cards out. We can ask anything right now. <laughs> Group number two's person. What, well, if, the, if fear didn't exist, what would they do? If fear didn't exist, what would they do? Huh. Interesting. The High Priestess and the Four of Wands. Oh, I know what it is. I have a song in my head, but hold on. I have to place it. Oh, God, it's a Dixie Chick song. Or I think they're called the Chicks now. Things have changed, rearranged. I think it's you. And they sing it with Steve Martin. I'm getting the tune in my head very strongly, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> Maybe for some of you, go look up that song <laughs> and see if it resonates with your situation at all. Uh, High Priestess, King of Cups, and the Four of Wands. I, I feel like they wouldn't want to hide what they're feeling. They wouldn't have, want it to be a secret. They wouldn't want to hide it. They'd want to be able to share things openly. And I think that's what they'd really want. I don't know why they feel like they need to hold back so much. Maybe also to openly express even some things that they've been experiencing when it comes to the connection as well. Like maybe signs or... It, it almost feels like this person doesn't tell you nearly half of what they experience. And they'd want to open up to you about it. This person could literally want to also perhaps see you in person or come visit your home is what I'm getting for some of you as well. Okay. So with the King of Wands we have as a future action, it's kind of an interesting one. I'm going to clarify it though because I want to know a little bit more for that one. It feels like they want to be your match. You know what I mean? Is what I'm getting. But what are they what what are their intentions or what do they plan to do about this connection ten of pentacles make you their wife or their husband or their person or their partner take it make it real put a ring on it it feels like they want to wait and see what can happen it's almost like they're in it to win it <laughs> I totally just, I don't know where I'm getting some of this. I'm actually getting a lot of weird messages coming through my head. So, yeah, oh, I, that's the phrase I got, in it to win it. What? Yeah, <laughs> that's what it feels like. And it feels like this person's kind of willing to wait around and, and see what happens. There's almost a sense of support, like catch you when you fall or something like that too. Hmm. That's what I'm getting. I feel like this person would want some kind of long-term future with you, though, I have to say, for a lot of you. So that's interesting. I feel like they'd want to stay around in your life in any capacity for a long time, though, even if it only was, like, from friendship. Like, they'd want to... I'd, I think they... I feel like they'd want you to be a part of your life. Um, I'm actually going to do something I didn't do for group number one. Don't tell group number one. I want to get some messages for you. 
because this is an interesting group. So, their person say, so I fantasize about you. So they might keep a lot up in their head rather than um, speak it out loud. I think that kind of confirms that thought I was having. Having, sorry. I appreciate our friendship. Yeah, and I think that's also clarifying that fact that I, you know, it kind of, it's almost like this person's willing to be in your life in any capacity, whatever it takes or whatever they can get, they'll, they'll take it. But I do feel like for a lot of you, they're still hoping like that they'll get the ultimate goal or something like that. <laughs> We have Can I Keep It You, which is from Casper. Um, it's what Casper the Friendly Ghost says to Cat in the in the movie. It's so cute. Hold on, I'm trying to like <laughs> trying to pick up cards here. I had like a mess. I'm not taking the ones that weren't flipped over. So Can I Keep You? Yeah, that's from um he's like, Can I keep you? And she's like, Casper? Because he said it when she was sleeping. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Casper? And he's like, yeah, I'm Devin Sawa. <laughs> he was such a hunk when I was a teenager. Okay. So, number... And now, now I look at him and I'm like, ooh, how did I think that was cute? But, you know, of course he's like my son's age now. <laughs> or my... Well, younger than my daughter. Okay, anyways. I miss the sound of your voice. And... I'm inexperienced, huh? Well, this person might not feel, in, uh, they might feel inexperienced when it comes to a situation like yours or maybe in love in general. Like maybe they don't know how to kind of go about things as well. And you're a unicorn in a world of sheep. So this is indicating that they do feel like you're a very special person, that you're different than everyone that they know. So I do feel like this is definitely somebody who does feel a connection toward you. They do think about it. I think they're fe fearful, but I think that they would like to clear the air to be open and honest with you. Um, I can't swear to all of you that they'll act upon those wishes. You know, this is a general reading, so, you know, everyone's going to have a different outcome here. But I feel like this person wants things to happen. They want to make it happen. I feel like this person wants to beat the fears, especially the King of Wands. The King of Wands is like fire energy. It's like, you know, usually pretty bold and courageous. So I would say that they're kind of, especially when they're a desire, you know, desiring something. If they're desiring something hard enough, a fire sign will usually beat down any door to get to what they want. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They'll, they'll blaze trails. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I feel like this person would, would be bold in some case. Like they want to be, or they, they plan to be, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, that is what I'm seeing for those of you that chose group number two. They do feel the connection, so I'm glad to say that. <laughs> and uh, I hope you, this reading helped. Let me know how you felt about it in the comments below. Take care, guys, and have a beautiful day. See you in the next reading. Hey, guys, so if you chose number three... This is your reading. So this is the Galena Stone. So welcome to your reading. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started. So does the person on your mind feel the connection or not? I'm going to actually cleanse the area really quickly because I feel like I should after group number two. I don't know why. Okay. So let's find out. <laughs> so we have growth and transformation. Judgment. King of Cups and the Fool. Hmm. There might be a little bit of a jealous streak to this person. We have Envy. This is actually, I remember this. See, I actually um, drew the cards yesterday. Like I was shuffling yesterday for this reading, but I didn't get a chance to film it. And, uh,. I didn't even remember, like, honestly, when I sat down, what was in <laughs> anywhere. Because <laughs> obviously I'll see when I shuffle. Come on. They pop out in front of me. Like, I'd be... 
<laughs> I'd be joking if it, <laughs> if I told you that they didn't, if I didn't see what they were. And oftentimes I'll get, I'll start getting messages already then and there. But like with such a distance, I, I kind of come at this with a fresh look. But one thing I do remember is that Envy came out twice because it started to come out and it didn't quite come out all the way. And then when I re, I shuffled again, like reshuffled, um, because I wasn't certain, it came out again. So this was definitely a confirmed card here. So that's an interesting card to come up. So Envy. Hmm. Well, of course, this person might be envious of something uh, surrounding you, so that might make sense to some of you. Uh, I do feel like this person does feel a connection to you, I have to say. With the Judgment card, that alone kind of implies a sort of awakening or a sort of new, fresh start or a sense of a calling as well. So... Especially with the Everyday Witch Tarot, like, the, the imagery there really speaks to me as feeling called towards something. And it's kind of because she reminds me of, like, the Piper a little bit. And it's almost like calling something in. I don't know. There's just some sense of, like, destiny or, I don't know, some sort of sense of, like, a pull. You know? Kind of like being under a spell. And uh, I do feel like there's something musical about this. Something flowing about this. I don't know if you guys connect on music, though. But I'm, I, I don't know. I'm... I'm a little bit more intuitive tonight than I usually am. Like sometimes, I, not not that I'm not, but like some days I'm like hyper intuitive and I feel like this is one of these days <laughs> where I'm like getting a lot of messages, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I normally wouldn't say something like this, but I really do feel that strong musical connection. And you know, <sighs> this person feels a lot of emotion toward you. With the king of cups this is somebody who does have a deep depth you know of feeling a depth of feeling for you they do hold a lot of space for you and they do feel very supportive and empathetic towards you they care about you definitely so do they feel a connection well certainly with the king of cups there there's an emotional connection there's emotional feelings there now with this could be the one as well obviously coming out like I said to group number two, there are, there are some negative cards in this deck that could come out and say, not really. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and this is one of the cards that does imply that there's something there. This could be the one. You've already met the romantic partner you seek. So there's also these little cherubs. And so I do think of someone feeling as if it's sort of destined or that there's something magical about it. or There's, there's a cer certainly a sense of drawing because look at, they're like little cherubs, like cupids. And Cupid strikes and then people fall in love. And you remember I was kind of talking about that that sort of calling there with the judgment card? It's almost like somebody who's really feeling drawn to you. <laughs> like on a very like instinctual level. Like they can't even understand it. And in fact, I, I feel like I could tell you that like for 90, like 8% of you, this person's probably like, what? Why do I like can't stop thinking about this person? Why am, why, why am I drawn to this person? You know? That's the kind of vibe I get. Like, they don't understand it even, probably. <laughs> Especially if they're a practical person. But I do feel like that there's a sense of this being a very emotionally challenging and lifting up, building relationship, sort of. I do feel like this is a relationship. First of all, it can be long-lasting with the imagery here. We have a tree and the moon. So there's cycles that you'll go through. But I do feel like, overall, there's a sense of, like, very rootedness. Like, it's very deep, this instinct. You know, it's like something that's almost un on subconscious on a subconscious level and uh <clears throat> sorry uh but yeah I, I do feel like this person feels a connection with you now this card represents like i told the other groups too i kind of have different cards for different meanings here sometimes i don't tell you guys what they mean i read them myself i don't sit there and say this is this position and this is this position and this is this position because that's going to be boring for you um probably but this particular position kind of talks about the future now I'm going to clarify it because a fool can mean really two different things and it depends um, it can be about having a lighthearted attitude towards connection so it could be taking it easy taking it slow okay like just kind of being like whatever we'll see what happens but it can also imply that someone's willing to take a risk like a big risk like just jump right into it you know what I mean um, so let me kind of clarify that and just see so for group number three, I think they're going to go for it. With the eight of wands, I do think they're going to go for it. There is a sense of uh, texting, talking, seeing, visiting, perhaps travel for some of you. 
This is also going to be pursuing a physical relationship as well. Mm, Queen of Swords. So, uh, for some of you, like, it, it, it depends on what makes sense for you. I think this person, they want to get to know you more. They want to kind of pursue this. They want to take a risk to get to know you, that sort of thing. There might be a little bit of a cautionary vibe there, but I feel like more so they just want to get to know your mind and get to know who you are intellectually and kind of build that that bridge with you through talking. Yeah, and then we have the Ten of Pentacles because they do, I think, really want something long-term and they're very much interested in long-term connections at this time. I feel like for a lot of you, uh, they don't want to rush into anything too quickly. They want to kind of build it naturally, organically and just see where it goes. Um, rather than pushing it too fast, too far. So there is a lighthearted energy, but it's like not as if they don't care or they're going to use you or anything like that. Because this is a person who's very caring, so I wouldn't say that. Hmm. Yeah. So I think this person does plan to kind of get to know you to see where you can kind of take the relationship, essentially. I do feel like this person would like for it to be a long-term relationship because they do feel very connected to you as well. And they do feel like you're someone special. Now, I'm going to ask what's up with the Envy card. Now, this may, remember, with group readings and stuff like this, of course, some of you, maybe this card isn't for you, but let me see. What is this Envy card here for? What's up with that? Mm. They might feel like a little bit... Uh, Ooh, okay, so for some of you, this person could easily get salty if they feel like you're not paying attention to them. For some of you, they might be in the energy of feeling as if you're not actually interested in them. This is the type of person who could literally perhaps not even reply back to you, but then be pissed that you didn't, like, message them. Or, or that you're talking to other people even though they don't kind of put too much effort. For some of you, you're going to recognize that as a trait they have. N not for all of you. Okay, so don't take it. If they're not like that, then it's not your message. But that might be the case for some of you. I almost feel like this person is very much like bothered if you kind of ignore them or don't pay attention to them. They also might feel as if you have more than they have even. With the Five of Pentacles, they might feel like you have more money than them, that you're too good for them, that you'd never be interested in someone like them. There might be some sort of like that feeling there. Because with Envy, the message says, I'm the same as everybody with different challenges. So you guys might have a little bit of a different circumstance in life. And they may not envy you necessarily, but I feel like maybe they're below your status, you know, or they're not quite up to par or something along those lines. Hmm. Yeah. So that is what I'm getting there. That's an interesting message. <laughs> so yeah, let me see. Anything else I'd want to say? I feel like that's pretty much it with this group. I feel like, yes, there's definitely an instinctual connection. There's a spiritual, like kind of like a calling towards you. They can't quite look away. There's a song that I'm getting, but I can't think of what it is. I can't, mm, I can't think of what it is. Darn it. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, but it seems like there's a sense of like, Wanting to kind of explore what happens. I do feel like they want to take a risk towards you for the most part, though, for most of you. I really do feel like that is the case. But I, at the same time, it's like they want to take a risk, but they want to kind of build it slowly. So I, I feel like the intentions also of this person are pretty good. Like they have good, like solid intentions towards you. Or at least in the sense that they wouldn't want to hurt you or screw you over or do anything bad to you. You know what I mean? Or use you or something like that. I don't really see that energy. I see more somebody who cares about your long-term and future, is invested in you, and cares a lot about you. Um, and that's partially because they feel that connection. There might even be, like, uh, this sense of, like, I don't even know why I care about this person so much. Like, they may get very actually invested in your life, too, in your hardships, um, emotionally. So, yeah, that's what I'm seeing for those of you that chose group number three. Thank you so much for being here. Let me know if you 
if the reading resonated with you, if you got a better sense of this person that you're asking about, let me know. And if you chose group number three, let me know. Anyways, commenting is always nice. I like when you guys comment and it makes me smile. So take care guys and I'll see you all in the next reading. Hello my friends, so if you chose group number four here with the serpent team, this is your reading. So let's find out, there's group number three still, let's put that aside. So let's find out about the person on your mind and see how, I forgot to cleanse so I'll just do that while I'm talking, but let's see if they feel the connection as well. Are they feeling a connection towards you? What kind of connection? Where do they want it to go? That sort of thing. So let us get started. So we have vulnerability concerns indecision you deserve love and the six of cups page of cups and the hermit <clears throat> do they feel the connection well the six of cups to me implies that there is a connection there the Six of Cups can even literally be described as sort of this past influence, like as if you've known your souls have known each other before, or it's like when you, you know, it's like, you know, I met up with a friend when my sister passed away, uh, you know, the night of my, it was my birthday uh, on her visitation and, and uh, my friend showed up from childhood. I hadn't seen her since we were like 10 years old and she showed up because uh, she still lives in the area and she's like it's like we she gave me a gift and we had had dinner a few nights before and she'd said it's almost like we never like separated we we're never apart like I just feel still so connected to you and stuff like that and that's like the six of cups you know even if you don't have that history with somebody it's almost like man I just we click we know each other we feel good together there's a sense of like connection there and that's why people will often say that's like the you know soulmate card, the past life card, um, and they kind of use this terminology with it because there is a sense of like very kind-hearted friendliness. And for some of you, this could be a little bit of a friendship. Uh, some of you might be asking about that because I do feel that Six of Cups is a very friendly card. With the right cards, of course, it can be romantic. Um, we had the Page of Cups here, which could talk about a crush energy, but it can also be a very friendly energy as well. So I'm kind of getting mixed feelings on whether there's this is a romantic connection or just like something that's very much um, like friendship based. Okay, so that's... Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if I feel comfortable trying to look into it because some of you might not need it to go in that direction or you don't. So I don't, I don't know if it's a good idea. We'll see how I feel as I go on. What this person, I think there is definitely a sense of emotional connection here though because we have two cup cards coming out. They do feel an emotional connection to you. They do feel like I said that sort of draw or that sort of like comfort. comfort. Yeah, comfort. But at the same time, there's a sense of having a really hard time opening up and being very indecisive, right? Because we have vulnerability concerns, somebody who kind of puts a cage over their heart. That song by Cat Power comes to my my mind, Metal Heart, with that. But uh, indecision as well. I use intuition in all aspects of my life. Well, of course, this person probably like I said feels an intuitive connection to you but really there's a sense of this person not really doing anything about these feelings and I don't know it feels like a lot of you are dealing with somebody who's not talking to you much or they're not really pushing anything uh we have the hermit as the outcome sort of or what they plan to do and that's a card of kind of going within it's not really about taking um solid action outward and this probably relates to like because they don't know exactly what to do this you deserve love this person i think that i'm gonna just be 100 percent honest here with you guys because i don't like sugar coating and i want to be direct i don't lead people astray but this person might feel like you deserve better than them at this time and this is a possibility also that this person roots for you romantically and for a different situation than them even 
So that's why for some of you, this could even be something that's very much friendship based. I have to, yeah, let me see. I'm going to ask a little bit more. I know some people came here asking about romantic feelings. So would you say this person has romantic feelings for group number four? Those that chose this group. Are there romantic feelings? I feel like if circumstances were different, maybe. I feel like this person isn't exactly necessarily super romantically attracted at this time for some reason. It might be because there are circumstances that yet kind of need to clear up here with the Five of Swords and the Judgment card. Again, this is not, might not be something they're aiming for and that might make sense to some of you. Um, for others of you, the reason why they might not be kind of pursuing that is because of some kind of factor, right? Maybe some sort of change that would need to happen or take place. With the Nine of Pentacles here, I do think that this person finds you tr attractive and nice and and uh, well off as an example. You're the type of person that is a good, high standard, a high standard individual. But there is something I think that kind of blocks this. And again, we have that vulnerability concerned concerns. So it's almost like a person who finds you attractive. There's nothing wrong with you, but they're not quite certain on how to kind of go about it. So do they feel a connection? Absolutely. Why? Well, they, sorry, it's a hair on me. I thought it was something else. <laughs> I'm like, I start blowing on it right away. I'm like, ah, I'm panic. Okay. Why do they want to take the action of the hermit? The four of swords. <laughs> Okay, because they want to rest. Uh, six of Cups. Well, they might be on on other things. They have, might have other things on their plate at this time. There might be past connections or past situations that they're dealing with. Um, they might also have something kind of going on in their life that they need to kind of just take a break from. It could be that this connection is difficult for them to maintain at this time for some reason. It might be more peaceful for them to kind of abstain. I have to say for some of you that's the truth. It might be that, you know, and, and sometimes, oh my God, I'm channeling songs like crazy tonight. I got that, want to put my tender heart in a blender. <laughs> Rendezvous that I'm through with you. God, what is that song? It's from like when I was a teenager. It's an old song. I don't even know the name of that song, to be honest. But yeah, want to put my tender heart in a blender. Like, that line came through. It's almost like someone who doesn't want that. Like, they don't want to put their tender heart through a blender. Like, I don't know if they are, like, pessimistic or what you're dealing with. I used to call my friend rendezvous. Oh, gosh. I used to sing that to my friend in fifth grade. I feel like, or well, my fifth grade friend, but we we stayed friends after that. <laughs> her name was Rhonda, so I call her Rhonda because <laughs> I was so original. I thought that was so funny. She probably thought it was annoying. Okay, so yeah, that seems to be that this person. It's like they feel a connection, but they're not gonna act upon it. There might be, like I said, this sense of like maybe they don't feel like they can give you what you want. I get that song. Oh my God. What the? <laughs> I have that song every, th oh my God, this is horrible. Like this, some of these songs, unless you're like old, <laughs> you're not going to know these songs. There was a song. It was like, it was a, oh, this is vertical horizon. I think everything, she you're everything she wants, everything she needs, <laughs> something you say all the right things at all the right time. I Oh my god, I can't think of what that song's called either. I just keep getting these like lyrics, like kind of like or tunes in my head, and then yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't control how songs come through. <sighs> Whatever. Okay. So yeah, that is what I'm seeing here. So do they feel a connection? Absolutely. But we do have somebody who's not really acting upon this. 
information. They, it's like they'll just keep it to themselves. What is the main issue here with this person? Like, hmm. So there might be a sense of like wondering whether it would be the right thing, you know, to, to speak up. At this time, there might be a reason for that. They might not feel like it's a good time to speak up. They might feel like they would rather be secretive about what they're really thinking or what they're kind of um, devising behind the scenes. There might also be, there could be concern, of course, with your own reaction. The high priestess is quite mysterious. So it could be that this person's not quite sure how you could react, like what you would say or how, what you would reply to them or what you would, you know, kind of do with the situation. Um, like, you know what I mean? Like they, they, you could just cut their head off or you could knight them and be like, oh yeah, you're my knight in <laughs> shining armor here, you know, do the shoulder thing. But, you know, <laughs> that <laughs> that's kind of what I got <laughs> from that. It's almost like they don't know what the reaction would be. There also might be really a sense of trying to be fair or just or do the right thing for some of you. In a certain, like There may be something about that situa situation where they just want to do the right thing. So is there potential for this connection to grow for group number four? Is there potential? So <clears throat> I feel whoever identifies as the feminine or more feminine energy, doesn't matter what your gender is or anything like that necessarily. Uh, we, it might be that it's up to one person to kind of pursue this or to, to do something about this. When I see those scales and I see, it's just like the whole vibe gives me that maybe one person has to step up a little bit more in order to make this happen or there might need to be, there might need to be offers that are taken or like, it almost feels like for some of you, there's like you're wasting time or something's wasting away here. Um, and that might need to be knocked off or something. So if you're not talking to this person, it might be time to talk to them as an example. If you want something to happen, it might be time to express this as an example as well. Um, it almost feels though that there is power for this to happen somehow or for something to happen with it. Why is the four of cups here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, this is just confirming exactly what I was thinking. Okay, so I am right. What I was kind of getting, Ma magician, this is about action. This is about taking uh, control of your visions and turning them into reality and saying, I want a pumpkin, poof, there's a pumpkin, you know, and actually, you know, going to the farmer's market and buying a pumpkin. You know what I mean? It's actually making it happen, not just dreaming about it. And so that's what the magician offers us is the ability to kind of manifest. And that's why it's called a manifesting card, you know, or like they'll like, oh, it's a manifesting card. It's because that is what we do. We, you know, envision something and then we bring it into reality. And it might be that there's a sense of action that needs to be taken. It's almost like, I have to say there with the Four of Cups, it's almost like somebody's wasting some sort of potential. Now, for some of you, I know you're going to yell in the comments at me and you're going to say, it's them. Well, you know what? Screw them then. Like, let them go do that, you know, and you go do some, you know, put this action towards something better. Um, but if that's the case, but if, if it is up to you and like, say maybe you really could do something about the situation, like maybe you could speak up or you could ask them to spend more time with you or you could do something to make it happen. Well, then of course, if you want this, connect, you know, you want this relationship to develop further as an example, it might be up to you to make that happen. Okay. So, <sighs> That's all I have to say about that. But yeah, no, do they feel a connection? Absolutely. Um, for sure. And uh, I do but I do feel like this person is a little bit held back though at this time. And I don't feel like they intend to do anything about it so much necessarily. It's like they'll feel the connection in their own in their own space but not necessarily do anything about it. They might keep it to themselves, essentially, even. Even if you're talking, the hermit doesn't have to mean that they're going to ignore you. It might mean that they just keep this. It's like... <laughs> I get that little song from my head when I was in church when I was little. This little item, and I'm gonna let it shine. You have to use your finger. 
and then we'd have to blow on it. <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. <laughs> yeah, it might be somebody who want, doesn't want to let the light shine, you know. They don't want to share that stuff with you. They won't open up to you about it. They might keep it to themselves a little bit. And again, that might be up to you to kind of open them out of that hermit mode. But, uh... And again, this might have some something to do with, like, for some of you, them literally not knowing what to do. Because they don't really know how you feel. So they don't know which step to take. And for others of you, it's like they don't want to, you know, get the breaking heart stuff happening to them. They don't want to get their heart in a blender, as I said earlier. But anyways, <laughs> that is what I'm seeing for those of you that chose Guru, number four. Thank you for being here. I hope this brought some insight into the connection. And I'm sending you all lots and lots of love. Take care. And I'll see you in the next reading. Bye-bye.